Today we're gonna to create this Vox inspired lower third animation using Apple Motion. And if you're a patron, you can actually download this lower third with some extra options right now. First things first, go ahead and open up Apple Motion. If you don't get the project browser, you can push Command, Option, and N. From there, we're gonna go ahead and select the Final Cut title and you can leave your presets at whatever you like. Go ahead and push Open. From there, go ahead and select the title background and the type text tier layers and delete those. Select your pen tool, then come up and click anywhere on the screen, hold Shift, and then create a second point. After that, go ahead and push enter or return and then jump on over into your inspector. You'll see we have these rounded lines and we want straight lines. So we're gonna come on down to the outline settings and change the start cap over to none and the end cap over to none. From there, we're also going to disable the fill and then we can jump into the geometry settings and find the control point settings here. I'm gonna set these to even numbers. It's just easier to work with. So I'm actually gonna set point one to 150 and point two to negative 150. And that should give us a nice straight line with even numbers to work with. After that, jump back into your style settings. We can drop the width to whatever we like. I find that 30 has been looking pretty good for what I am wanting. Make sure that your color is set to white. This will be important down the line. After that, jump into your property settings, click on this down arrow next to the position settings and select reset parameter. So now this will be directly in the center. At the very end, we're gonna drop it to the lower third, but as for right now, we're gonna keep it right here in the middle. Okay, so we have our first initial Bezier line. Let's go ahead and rename this to be original and that'll just help us differentiate down the road. From there, we're gonna go ahead and do the animation. So jumping back into our shape settings, come down to the last point offset. Click on this down arrow, leaving it at 100%. Go to add parameter behavior and select ramp. From there, we're gonna find the start value and set this to negative 100%. That means it's going to start at 0% because it's negating the 100% value that it originally has. And then over the duration of our ramp, which is here in the timeline, you can see it's going to write on this line. Now we definitely want this way shorter for the animation to play out. So go ahead and come to about half a second. For me, that's 30 frames because I'm on a 60 frame per second timeline. And I'm gonna push O. So now this is going to play out over half a second, just like so. It's not very smooth. So let's go ahead and find the curvature slider here and drag that bad boy all the way up to 100%. So now the animation should be a bit smoother. So we now have our initial animation. We can actually get to the fun part of adding in some colors. So what we're gonna do is create what's called a clone layer. I have an entire video on that right here. So we're gonna go ahead and push K and that's gonna create the clone layer. Then we're gonna go ahead and disable the original layer. And this clone layer is going to be where our base colors start. I'm gonna bring in some colors that I got off of a Vox video, just so we can get them exact. And you can see we've got this nice blue, this nice desaturated red, and this nice yellow. Selecting our clone layer, let's go ahead and rename this line blue. We'll jump into our filters, go to our color and select colorize. From there, get your color picker and choose this nice blue color. So we now have this base blue color from the Vox animation. After that, select the line blue and push command D to duplicate it. We don't want another clone layer, we actually want a duplicate layer. And that is because if we cloned it, it would actually bake in this colorize effect and we don't want that. We just want its own individual colorize effect. However, this is still a clone of the original layer. Okay, so from there, we're gonna select the colorize effect, find our color picker, and we're gonna select this nice red color. Then we're gonna select our line one more time, Command D again to duplicate it, and we're gonna change it over to that nice yellow color. So now we have all three of the colors, but we do have a problem if we play out, just the yellow is gonna show up. And that is because we have these all playing out at the same time. So we need to offset them. To do that, go ahead and we're gonna rename each of these lines just so they're easy to find, just like so. So find the red line. We're gonna click and drag and bring that over a few frames. You could do about five, six, seven, somewhere in there. And then we'll go ahead and offset the yellow. So we'll bring it past the red a few frames, just like so. So now if we play through, we should have this nice animation of all of the lines being drawn on. From there, let's go ahead and add in a text element. So I'm gonna create the text item here and we're just gonna put in a name just like so 
and you can set it to whatever style you like. And I'm gonna set it to a font size of about 250. And then I'm going to actually drag this down to where the line is and that's looking pretty good. After that, let's go ahead and duplicate this text item. We'll bring it down a little bit lower and just bring the scale way down and we'll find another font for it. And this will essentially say what I do. So we'll just write something like editor dude man bro. And that's actually the official name for me. And then we're gonna jump over into the properties and we'll find the X and Y parameters here. And we're gonna animate this coming down real nicely. So let's go ahead and see if we can get this to be a nice even number of negative 140. Then we'll click on this down arrow, add a parameter behavior and select ramp. Then we'll go ahead and set the start value to be a little bit higher. And then we're gonna go ahead and shorten that ramp way, way down. So it's much shorter of an animation. And then let's go ahead and drag this over to where the yellow line is actually finishing in so that it almost completes at the same time as the yellow line, just like so. We could actually, let's drop this down to negative 150. There we go, that's looking much better. And we'll set that to 50 so that's perfectly spaced from that line. Okay, so we now have this animation playing out and that line is drawing in. And then in the Vox animation, the text actually types on, which is super easy to do in Apple Motion. So go on up to your behaviors, go to text animation and select type on. And you'll see it's created this nice long type on animation. We'll find the beginning of where we want the text to start coming on. Selecting the text, we'll push I, which will trim it into that point. And then selecting our type on, we'll go to the end of where we want the animation to end and push O. So now it will be typed on in that short amount of time. Okay, so we have the basics of the lower third happening. Let's go ahead and do some final touches to really make it look like a Vox animation. Selecting your group, go up to your filters, go to time, and we're gonna select the strobe effect. And this is going to essentially make it look like a stop motion effect. Let's go ahead and set it to about 12 frames per second. I think it, their animation somewhere around there. I don't know officially, but now if we play through, we should have this nice looking stop motion effect of the text coming in just like so. After that, let's go ahead and select the group and drag it down to the bottom left hand corner just like so. And now we have a gorgeous Vox inspired lower third that you can download if you are a patron and you'll be able to change the colors as you please with some on-screen controls. If you enjoyed this tutorial, you might also really enjoy this tutorial all about recreating a lot of Vox animations. Thank you so much for watching and I can't wait to see you in the next one.